good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. <coughs> Ask the Lord to forgive me my foolish thoughts and things like this, but sometimes we do these things. It's good to be back. Uh, and uh, I would like to say before we get started, uh, we had a wonderful service Wednesday night. I enjoyed it, and uh, I know it was on uh, the computer, and I know a lot of us got to like to see it. It was, a wonderful, it was a wonderful message, and I uh, just thank the Lord for it. All right, in Colossians is where we'll try to read some this morning in the third chapter, Colossians, <clears throat> starting with uh, verse 1. Paul here, uh, as he was writing to the church, he started out the third letter, I suppose, or uh, the third part of the letter, and he asked them a question, or he made a statement, and he said, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, for Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So Paul here, uh, he's, he's asking them, or he's saying, if you, if you then be risen, and that this morning should be something this morning that we ought to ask ourselves daily. Uh, and you say, well, I know where, I know I am, I know I am, yeah, I know I am too. But the thing of it is, we have a spirit within us that needs assurance. Amen. It needs all the help it can get because we've got this filthy, ungodly body outside that torments it all the time. And it puts doubts on it and causes it to uh, get down sometimes. And so when the question is asked, have you been saved? Yes, I've been saved. And uh, can I give you my experience? Because that is something this morning that uh, that will encourage our spirit and then uh, it will put down the flesh. Amen. So this morning, uh, he says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Amen. Of course, he's saying this morning, seek the heavenly gifts that, uh, that, we, that we get when we have uh, been risen with Christ, when we have died to, uh, died to Christ. Uh, we have those heavenly uh, gifts that we can receive from Him. He says, because uh, Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, and He is there making intercessions for us, and we can depend on, on Him doing these things, and we should be, we should be over thrilled, we should be excited spiritually. We won't be excited fleshly, but we ought to be excited spiritually that Jesus Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us because, listen, Jesus Christ is the one that can talk to the Father. Amen. I cannot talk to Him. And uh, you say, well, that's crazy. No, it's not. You're right. Uh, I cannot talk to the Father because, listen, I don't understand enough to talk to Him. But Jesus Christ, I can talk to through the Holy Spirit and He can decipher my prayers, my thoughts, he can say, Father, if he means this by this, or he's asking this, or he's doing that. And listen, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful thing to have someone on your side. Even when you're, if you get in trouble and have to go to the law, you depend on that lawyer to right. speak for you and to uh, cover for you and to do whatever needs to be done. And I expect, and I, I, I know that Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he's making intercessions for me. And sometimes I, I get trying to pray and, and I, I just go off in a, in a, in a mist and I, uh, and I come back to myself and I say, well, what am I doing? But the Holy Spirit knows what I'm doing. And, and the Lord Jesus Christ knows what I'm doing. And he's there making these intercessions for us. So uh, Paul says here that Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Now he says, set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. Amen. And uh, we, this morning, would like to read a scripture to you this morning concerning this uh, chapter and this verse in Ephesians. And, and it's uh, chapter 1 and verse 11. Notice here in, chap in Ephesians 1 and verse 11, it says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Amen. That we should be to the praise of his glory who trusts in Christ. 
in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance to the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And this again, when we think upon these things that has happened to us, the being predestined, being chosen, being uh, appointed to be a child of God, we this morning need to be, uh, we need to be closer to the Lord and what we are. And right. he says, set your affections on things above. And so we have a problem this morning with this situation. Because, again, I say that the flesh does not do that. The flesh does not care about heavenly things. Right, amen. It's just that plain. It's just like you can say the devil is a snake and he doesn't believe in God. He is, he is one that's after your soul if you can get it. Or he's after after anything that he can do to hinder you from serving the Lord. And so this morning, uh, this flesh of mine, again, it hinders me and it hinders me. And that's the reason why that I am so glad this morning. And I want to bring it to your attention that you have Jesus Christ, your mediator, sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you because this flesh likes to bleed in to your conversation from the Spirit when you're praying. Mm -hmm. It likes to get in there and filter in there and cause problems. And so this morning, we need to thank the Lord because we have Jesus Christ there at the foot of, at the side of the Father. Now he says in verse, verse 3, I want you to notice something here. For ye are dead. <clears throat> and a lot of people in this world cannot understand that. And the flesh cannot understand it because the flesh says, if I'm dead, I'm buried. And, the, and the, the Spirit says, if I'm dead, I'm alive. Mm -hmm. Because this death that he's talking about is that your flesh, your, your spirit has died to sin. It no longer has a desire to participate in the sinful acts of this world. But the flesh... The flesh comes right back and says, yes, but I am not dead, and I want to participate in the world of things. Mm -hmm. And so it does not, the flesh does not understand where it will be when it dies if it is not saved. It does not believe, it does not understand because the thing of it is, we need to keep this flesh under subjection and to, and to keep it from doing these things. But you and I know this morning that we are rolled with something that we cannot control. Mm -hmm. We can't control this flesh to the, to the, to the point of where that it will walk in the same walk as this spirit does. And so he says here, uh, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now in, I think it is in Galatians, uh, let me read there just a minute and find that. Galatians 5, I think. Right on this. <clears throat> Galatians 5.1, I believe it is. Now let me, let me just make sure. 5.1, yeah. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now the yoke of bondage was the law. And the, he's saying not to be entangled again with it because if you get entangled with it, you're going to believe in circumcision, you're going to believe in baptism, and you're going to believe in works for salvation. And here he says, be not entangled again with that yoke of bondage because that, that yoke will pull you down. It'll keep you from obeying your master because of the yoke that is on you when you do this is not the yoke of the, of the Savior, but it's the yoke of the devil. And the yoke is what that they that kept the old steer pulling and kept him working, and they used that to, to, to guide him. And so you see this morning what he's saying where he says, not be entangled again with that yoke.
Because, listen, you're free from that. And how did you get free from that? Because grace did it. Amen. Grace come in, and for the law could not do it. And grace came in and took away that yoke. And now Jesus says to you, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in Amen. the heart. And so I'll guide you into all things. But here he says, you stand fast, therefore, in the liberty work with Christ has made us free, and that's through grace. He Amen. said, and be not entangled again with this yoke of bondage, or this works for salvation. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Amen. Now, it's the same way with baptism. Baptism is not for salvation. Bad, they'll, they'll teach this, and they'll They'll keep on and they, you think, well, they're going to preach a good message and they'll come right back around and the last thing they want to tell you is you need to be baptized in order to be saved. And listen, people, it's a lie out of the pits of hell. Amen. There's no, there's no reason why that, that baptism has any part in your salvation. This, the, the baptism is not, the, it's not for salvation, but it's because of salvation. Amen. You want to make a stand to the world. You want to tell the people, hey, I have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm here to offer myself to be baptized for, to show to the world that I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Not for, but because of. Amen. So he's saying here the same thing about circumcision. Circumcision was for one thing, and that was for identification. And that's why that Jesus, I mean, that God told Abraham about circumcising. It was for identifying his people. Baptism Amen. is the same thing. It's for identifying his people. Amen. And that's what we need to do is follow the Lord in baptism after salvation. And he's saying here, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. And so if people want to try to use baptism, circumcision for salvation, then they are, uh, uh, they are in debt to do the whole law. And we know this morning that the reason grace came was because that no man ever kept the law. Amen. And so there's got to be something besides circumcision or, or any type of works that man can do for salvation. And that ain't nothing but grace and it's grace and it's grace. Amen. And so this morning here he says, uh, in verse 4, Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. And so that don't sound like to me that any of us, anything about the law, we need to keep as far as for our salvation. Now, uh, no, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Amen. And I, when I was studying this, and my mind went back to Wednesday night to the the lesson that Brother Adam taught on love. Amen. And listen, people, uh, there's nothing like love. There's th that's it. And so here we see again back in our lesson as we. As we get back into uh, Colossians 3, notice here in verse 4, it says, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Now, here's what, he's, here, here's what Paul's suggestion is to the church. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Notice this, mortify, which means to control, it means to punish, it means to deny, and even it goes to the, uh, the meaning of kill, which is uh, a thing that is uh, not used in the way of killing yourself, but it means to just more or less uh, take, get that flesh under control by any means that you can, and, and that's what mortify is. And, and, and notice all of these things 
down here in chapter uh, verse 5 where it talks about these are the things that the flesh will do and this is the reason why that Paul recommended to them and they probably were guilty of a lot of this to mortify or to keep under control and notice uh, there, there, there's fornication, uncleanness, inordinate, evil of, uh, inordinate affections, evil con, 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 concupiscence, which re, remind, was, goes along with the uh, sexual part, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And so all of these things are committed and the, and the flesh wants that. The flesh desires that, people. Amen. Uh, the flesh Amen. desires, and you can say, no, I, I don't desire that. Listen, that flesh that you've got is the same flesh I've got. It's right. the same flesh that the whole church has got. It's filthy. It's, it's, Amen. it's uncontrollable. And it's something that we need to, as Paul says, mortify or to keep under control. And when we let this flesh step out and do these things, Jesus is always there. And, and he hears your prayer when you realize that you've done something you shouldn't do and you ask Jesus to forgive you and he turns to the Father and he forgives. And listen, that's, that's, that's the way that this process is going. It's a, it's a, it's a, continual, a continual prayer to the Lord to forgive sins that this body has committed. Because the spirit, uh, the spirit, that which is born of God, does not sin. And so you're not asking the Lord Jesus Christ to pray that your sins and your soul be forgiven. Because that has already happened. Amen. Listen, you're asking that God forgive those sins that your, that your flesh is doing. And we all walk knee deep in them all the time. Amen. And there's, I mean, it's, it, you know, it shouldn't, you shouldn't bow your head and say, oh, woe is me, woe is me. No, listen, all you need to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way you need to walk. And that's the way that you need to act. And so he says here, mortify those, those fleshly things. Now, in verse 6, notice here, he says, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So it sounds like to me, he's not talking about the lost, but he's talking about the saved. Mm -hmm. Because he calls them children of disobedience. Right. We're his children. But listen, we're a disobedient children. Day by day by day. And I'm not trying to put nobody down. I'm not trying to scare nobody. But that's just the facts. Amen. And that's exactly what God sees when He looks down. That's what, and and Jesus understands what is going on because He lived here some 33 years, and He understands about the flesh. Amen. And so He can turn to the Lord of God and say, "Hey, I'm their Savior. I died for." Them. And would you forgive them? And he cannot deny the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he says, yes. They're, 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 but, you know, that's the way it is. And uh, here, as Peter was writing this letter, he tried to get them to understand more so uh, than they did. Because he said, all of these things that you're, uh, that you're doing here, that's sin of the flesh. Now, now notice. He says in verse 6, For which things say, Wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometimes when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all of these. So now they have, they have tried to put these things. They understand this. And now he's saying ye have put off all of these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. And lie not one to another, and seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So here, the saved have got this knowledge of knowing that they can pray to Jesus and get their sins forgiven. And so he's saying, hey, uh, children... Uh, you're you're in the right. You, you know this is what you need to do, and you can put off all of these. And so now 
they know the, they know a, a, a better way than to want to go back under the law and try to sacrifice a bull for what they did. Right now, now notice uh, here he says uh, in verse eleven or verse ten, and ye and I read this, but have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him after God. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarians, cyclone, bond or free, but Christ is all in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved vows of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another. These are the things that we need to practice. Amen. These are the things, these are the things that will 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 help you when you uh, lay down tonight and try to rest. These are the things that will help you when you go before the Lord and ask for forgiveness of your sins. This is a thing that 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 will that will just clear you up and help you to be drawn closer to the Lord. Amen. Now he says, uh, also, it says, if any man have a quarrel against, let me get to uh, any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And so here is a, another thing that we are to do, and that is to forgive one another. If, uh, and, you know, it requires, I believe it requires, if, if, if someone sins against you and you go to them or if they offend you and then you go to them and, and you ask them uh, or tell them that they offended you, the proper way is you say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You say, I'm sorry. And I didn't know it or uh, I didn't realize what I was doing or whatever, whatever the circumstances may be. But listen, that, that, that right there clears up the whole thing. When, when you ask somebody, tell somebody that they have offended you and, and, and hurt your feelings, and they won't, then you carry it to, your, to two or three brothers. And if they won't, then you carry it to the church. But that's, that's the proper procedure for sinning against one another here. And so he says, Cry, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And verse 14, and above all these things put on charity, which is the bond, the thing that holds you together, the thing that, that is wrapped around you, that is the bond of love. He says, that is which is the bond of perfectness. And so, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. Amen. To the which also ye are called in one body, and to be ye thankful. And I think this morning that we as God's people are not as thankful as we should be concerning what we have. Amen. We have such great possessions. We have such great, we have such a great father. Amen. We have such a great deal. Hey, listen, we have, a, we've got something and we don't appreciate it like we should, I know, because I don't. Uh, I let this body get in, 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 in charge. I get to thinking about worldly things. I get to thinking about uh, how I'm going to save a nickel or how I'm going to uh, do this or do that. And listen, I leave God out of the picture. And that's not right. When I, when I need something, I need to go to him and say, here it is. I need this. I, won't, I, won't, I would like to have this. And uh, I think that a lot of times he don't give it to me because I don't need it. And uh, yeah. he can see down the road more than I can, and it may be a hindrance to me. Uh, you know, I could, uh, and, and most of the people look the worthy possessions, and uh, I, I, I don't, I don't need to love them. I don't need to, I don't need to, I don't need to put my thoughts on that when I can, can I can think about what Jesus Christ did for me. Amen. And uh, one day. I'm going to be with him, and I'm going to, uh, I'm, I, I won't want none of this stuff down here now, and so if I don't need it then, I don't need it now. So I hope it, uh, I hope it's something that's, that's read here will, uh, will help you and encourage you and uh, 
it's it's not a real encouraging time, but uh, uh, it can be Man. if you if you if you look in the right place and you walk in the right way and walk in the right path. It can be a it can be a pleasant time. So thank you for listening to me this morning. Amen. Amen.